This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Hello. In this episode, we're spotlighting a key standard that keeps the grid connected, secure and future ready, IC61850. Joining us today is Jackson Moore, application engineer at Triangle Microworks, also a proud sponsor of SGT26 in Paris. He's here to share why breaking through real-world grid challenges matters. Hello, Jackson. Thank you so much for having me. So, Jackson, tell, tell us a little bit about Triangle Microworks um, space or positioning in the IEC 61850 sector. Sure. So, Triangle's been around for coming up on 30 years, starting out in kind of the DNP3 space back in the mid-90s. Uh, growing into, you know, the industry as more protocols develop. So 6870, uh, 101, 104, ICCP and, and the like. And then once uh, 6250 development kind of started to come to a head in the early 2000s, uh, we partnered up with another company to begin offering a 61850 library. From there, we've grown into testing tools, uh, the ability to simulate, um, and validate systems. And then also we have a, a gateway product as well that allows you to convert between 61850 and other communication protocols. Right, okay. So what does your tool enable? What is the advantage of working with your tool for a utility? Sure, so there's really kind of two uh, two kind of categories that our, our tools fall into. So one would be uh, simulation based, right? So the ability to simulate one or multiple IEC 61850 devices. So typically servers, but definitely clients as well. Um, and uh, when I say simulated, I don't just mean from a communications perspective. We also offer the ability to simulate the, the behavior or function, uh, functionality of that device. And that's via JavaScript or uh, IEC 61131, basically programming languages that allow you to assign a behavior to your simulated device. So the advantage there is you're able to, as a, as a utility or system integrator, you're able to kind of have a mock-up of your substation, of your design, um, pretty quickly and pretty easily. Provide an SED file that describes your substation and quickly spin up devices, assign behavior to them, and you can begin to see how your actual substation will focus. If you want, you can disable one of the simulated devices and plug in a real one to do some hardware in the loop testing. Uh, the other, you know, big kind of category or bucket that our, our tools fall into would be the, the testing tools. So whether you're, you know, in a lab setting on a bench, kind of poking at a single device, or if you're actually kind of on the other end of the spectrum in a substation commissioning, um, we have tools that allow you to visualize what's on the network, communicate with the devices, ultimately validate them. It's, you know, it's a need within the digital substation space, you know, uh, for different tools that allow you to validate, is everything working as I expected? Um, and I believe your, you know, your Triangle Microworks is really at the forefront um, within the tool space. Um, when I talk to utilities, um, they're finding it quite hard to move from their pilot projects to larger scale deployments. And there are various factors around that. One of those issues is around usability of the tools. Um, a lot of utilities are still finding the tools quite complex to work with. Um, and that's also reflective of the fact that, you know, as we move beyond the experts, the 61850 experts, and engage the wider workforce, uh, there's a lot of training and upskilling required of that wider workforce, which takes time. So how are you working to support utilities with their upskilling? Sure, yeah. So... One thing that we've learned is having tools designed by experts, you end up with a tool that's liked by experts, but that's the average person is not always an expert, right? I mean, so uh, it's a different set of um, of, of buttons, of uh, descriptive words that you use within the tool of features and functionalities that you end up with um, once you actually have... Uh, you know, an engineer or technician using the tool compared to an IEC 61850 expert, right? Someone who's on the working group is just going to have a totally different experience. So we really work hard to solicit feedback via our user group forums uh, and things of that nature, try and actually talk to folks on the ground uh, who are using our tool, actually in substations, and find out what works and what doesn't, what was unclear. Um, what functionalities do you need that don't exist? Things like that. Yeah, simplification seems to be a buzzword at the moment. 
uh, within yeah. the utility environment. They're really looking for 61850 systems to be simplified, um, which sounds a little counterintuitive because it's a, a power grid is a complex environment. We know that. And so we need to hire people who can handle complexity. But I think the world at large is moving towards simplification. So is that something that you're taking into account with your tool development, how to truly simplify it so that it becomes really plug and play and easy for the average um, engineer within the utility to work with? Yeah, so the way that I kind of view that is you can't totally get rid of the complexity, but you can hide it to a certain degree. But you need to be able to unhide it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say someone's troubleshooting uh, a specific problem within a substation. I want to start out by providing them the minimum amount of information that I that I can, but the most relevant, and then uh, give them the opportunity to, to dig deeper. So you know, there's a lot of terms that we use in the 62850 space, right? Uh, goose message, data set. We talk about the headers, the different parts of the packet. If I can not use those terms uh, within the tool, at least initially, and just kind of provide a supervisory level. Green checkbox, red X. Okay, this is everything's good here. I see a red X here. Now let's drill deeper. And as we get deeper and deeper, I mean, at some point you might need uh, some legitimate expertise in order to diagnose a problem. But if we can avoid that and try and, um, like you said, simplify it wherever possible, that's that's absolutely the goal. And now we're always talking about virtualization as well. The you know substation virtualization is another big buzzword right now although utilities are not exactly sure what that's going to look like and what their migration path to it will be. In terms of your tools, you're working with Digital Twin at the moment, aren't you? Or you've implemented a version of Digital Twin. Tell us a bit more about that and what will it mean for utilities going forward? Sure. So, yeah, in terms of virtualization, I mean, you could think of it as uh, a, a maybe a distant cousin, right? So, the product uh, DTM, Distributed Test Manager, allows us to take an SED file and simulate all those devices in it, regardless of what manufacturer those IEDs are made by, right? So, and when I say simulate, again, uh, we're not just spinning up a server that's able to publish Goose and sample value, subscribe, although that it is part of it. We're also, we've written kind of default implementations for different logical nodes. I think there's, I don't know, over 300 different logical nodes defined by the standard. And we have uh, default implementations for most of them written in either JavaScript or uh, 61131. And uh, so when you actually simulate that device, uh, you can uh, we can look at the collection of logical nodes on that device, have behaviors assigned for them. We can look at what you know signals we're subscribed to and supposed to publish. Again, that's defined in the SCD. And very quickly come up with an approximation, digital twin, digital cousin, if you will, you know, a close approximation of the device uh, or devices defined in that SCD file for that substation. Okay. And how does your version of Digital Twin compare with others on the market? For example, the work that Mega's doing, um, they're quite vocal about their Digital Twin approach. Perhaps the others, I don't know what Omicron and others are doing in this space, Copa Data. But how would you say yours differs from those other uh, options? Well, from the very beginning, we've definitely taken uh, the approach that we want to be um, vendor agnostic in terms of who we support, right? Anyone who can define uh, their data model in an SCD file or an SCL file will be able to load into the tool and, um, you know, simulate. So I, I think that's one thing that kind of sets us apart or differentiates us. Um, additionally, I think the versatility, right? So we give ultimately con control to the user to customize. So, you know, while I said we have these default implementations for the different logical nodes, we give the control to the user. If they want to write a custom implementation to more closely mirror their particular device, uh, they absolutely have that ability. With that said, I don't know that we're ever going to replace like a vendor specific solution. If one IED vendor comes out with a digital twin for their product, that's not really who we're looking to replace. Uh, it's more so just multi-vendor or at least one tool that supports multiple vendors. Now, 61850 has been on the agenda for a long, long time. Most utilities in Europe um, have been working with it for the last 10, 15 years. 
lots of pilot projects, lots of exciting, innovative experiences uh, with 61850. But we're really yet to move towards large scale deployment. And I think that's um, starting to get a little frustrating, both for utilities and suppliers who want to steam ahead and, and get these substations rolled out on a much larger scale. What do you think is holding it up, Jackson? I mean, I think it's a combination of factors. Uh, I think, you know, we're well past, or at least we should be past the proof of concept phase, right? Uh, I think at this point, we've built some confidence that this can be done and that, uh, at least in my opinion, it should be done. We certainly have the same issue uh, here in the States as well, though. There's some reluctance, uh, I think, to commit the amount of uh, of support, you know, uh, the personnel funds to to get the ball rolling. It is a technology where, you know, you're not going to realize uh, the benefits on the first project you do. Some of them you will, you know, maybe um, less copper in the ground. You'll see that immediately. But the benefits to your engineering process take a lot longer to realize. Um, I think that's part of it. Yeah, that for sure. And when I talk to engineers, they are so convinced by the technology and so enthusiastic about moving forward with it. Um, however, they find that it's quite challenging for their senior management to completely understand the benefits from an organizational and financial point of view. There does seem to be a gap between the engineer's enthusiasm for it and the senior manager's conviction that this is going to pay off. Um, how do you think we need to, as an industry, approach that gap and fill that gap? Because I think time is running on and everybody really wants to see these large scale deployments. What's the solution? I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, for lots of folks, uh, a lot of my peers in the industry, 61850 is, uh, it's a religious like conviction. Um, once you, once you kind of buy in and you see some of the, uh, the benefits there, I mean, I think we got to do a better job of, of explaining, educating, uh, you know, I think a lot of people who don't live and breathe this stuff just still think of 6250 as a communication protocol. And it's so much more, right? A semantic data model, uh, an engineering process, right? And uh, once these other things really kind of come together, that's where the benefits are realized. So if you just think, okay, you know, I've been in this field for a while, I've seen communication protocols come and go, why is this one any better? Then you're only seeing half the story. And uh, I think we really need to do a better job of evangelizing, if you will, uh, about some of the other parts that are make up the standard. Well, at SGT26 in Paris, I'm delighted that Triangle Microworks are going to be delivering a workshop, a lunchtime workshop on 61850 and related uh, subject matter. We're going to have a combination of senior managers and technical people at the event. And it would be great if we can get them to convene together uh, to for, for a review of 61850, how do you think you can convince the senior management that this is the way for them to go? You know, I think the biggest thing is uh, hearing from their peers, right? It, I, hearing from us as vendors is we can do our best. We can tell a story, but I think uh, one thing that I've really liked about uh, you know in the past, you know, this past year in The Hague, the opportunity to hear from fellow uh you know, substation engineers that are working at these utilities, the experiences that they've had, the money they've saved, right? I mean, the how they're able to do more with less. <clears throat> Excuse me. To me, that's really the most powerful. That's not to shirk my responsibilities as a vendor, though, right? We do want to educate. We do want to do everything we can to uh, just make this approachable, right? Make it something that people can understand the costs and the benefits uh, and, and hopefully you see the net result is positive. Great. Okay, Jackson, thank you so much for, for your insights today. And we're looking forward to seeing you and your team on site at SGT26 in Paris next March. We look forward to your workshop. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Brendana. Thank you. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you, Jackson. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Smart Grid Forums, and follow us on LinkedIn. Until then, thanks for listening and watching. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.